And how do you think bleeding would um, manifest on imaging? And has it actually bled on this imaging? Well, the lesion appears, I mean, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's a bit denser than the other fat, but still homogenous enough for me. And I think it does not have that fluid component in it to suggest that it has bled. Or at least there is no recent bleeding. So how do we determine that the lesion has bled? We would look for increasing heterogeneity, development of a more fluid component, or enlargement of the size over interval imaging studies. And clinically, patients might present with flank pain or uh, other signs of retroperitoneal hemorrhage. Okay, we also did an ultrasound in this patient, and I would like to show you those images as well. Let me bring them here. Okay, let's ignore the right kidney. And this is the left kidney. So obviously you can't see this lesion as clearly on ultrasound as the CT scan, but I'm sure the um, sonographer would have been easily able to pick it because it's quite big. A lot of time the abnormalities appear much clearer in real time than on images. So but we'll try to find the ima uh, image where it best shows the lesion. Well, I've already found it. Have you? Okay, these images are, I think, a bit better. So you can see the left kidney. You can see it's nice, nice cortex over here in the interpolar region in the lower pole. But here in the part of the um, upper pole of the left kidney, you can see a fat density area, which is scalping the renal cortex. So that's where this lesion is. Oh, this is another very beautiful image, isn't it? So you can see almost all of the lesion here. And it's nice and homogenous. It does not show any fluid component to suggest bleed. All right. Also... There is a tiny cyst in the left renal cortex just be below this angiomyolipoma.